All right, there we go. Now we have some, we, these are all square roots, which is fine, but we don't have the square root of the same thing each time, which means that, let's just look and see if we can factor these out or simplify them and see if that would give us a common square root of whatever the heck we're gonna end up with. So first, we've got the square root of, actually, I use a different color. I've got the square root of four times x to the power of seven, so I'm gonna split that up. Sorry, let me go back here. The square root of four times the square root of x to the seventh. Square root of four is two. And this would be x to the power of 7 halves, which is 2 times x to the power of 3 with a remainder of 1. So I would have 2x cubed times the square root of x. So I used the remainder method that time. And that's as simplified as we can take that one. But let's look now at this 9x squared times the square root of x cubed. So I've got 9x squared times x to the power of 3 halves, which is the same as 9x squared times x to the power of 1 with a remainder of 1. So that's 9x squared times x times the square root of x, because we had that one remaining. So this is times, I'm sorry, this is going to be end, up, end up being plus 9x cubed square root of x. Now just between these two terms, we've got an x cubed for both of these and a square root of x. That means we can combine them. But before we do that, let's see what we can do about this minus 5x, x to the power, I'm sorry, the square root of x to the power 5, which would be x to the power 5 halves. So this is minus 5x, times x to the power of 2 with a remainder of 1. So minus 5x times x squared times the square root of x. So minus 5x cubed, because that's x to the power of 1 times x squared, times the square root of x. Now we do have to have, since we've got this cube, x cubed, and we've got the square root of x, for all three terms, then we can combine them. If any of these was missing in x cubed, then we wouldn't be able to combine that term with the others. If any of them were missing in square root of x, we wouldn't be able to combine that term with the others as well. They have to have not only the same variables, but the same powers as well for each variable. Now we are using the same variables here, but if they were different, they would have to be the same for each term. So the next step is to factor out from each term, we can take out an x cubed times the square root of x. So what does that leave us with on the inside? So we got a plus and a minus, right? So we took out this x cubed square root of x, that, that went away there, and we're left with the two. In purple, we took out the x cubed square root of x, which left us with the nine. And then here again, we got rid of the x cubed square root of x, so we're left with the five. Now when we combine these, two plus nine is 11, minus five is six. And then we're just gonna multiply that by the x cubed times the square root of x. And yes, I separated that on purpose with that multiplication symbol. Not that you really have to, but it does clarify that that's x cubed and not the cube root of x on the end there. So let's do this a different way. Um, I'm still going to split everything up the same way, but um, uh, uh, let me use a different color for that. So uh, I still have the square root of 4 times the square root of x to the power of 7. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2, which is fine. But right here I've got x to the power of 7, which again we can make this times x, well, 7x's like this. And at this point, I'm just looking for pairs of x's that I can pull out. So here I've got an x. Here I've got an x. And there's another pair of x's. And these are all multiplied. I've got this x, which is going to have to remain in the square root. 
So this ends up being 2x cubed square root of x. On this one, we've got 9 times, I guess I can make, I can make that x times x if it helps. But then I've got the square root of x times x times x. And here I've got another pair of x's that I can pull out of the square root. So that's 9 times x times x times the new x. And this x is going to have to stay in the square root because it has no, nothing to pair with. So this ends up being 9x cubed square root of x. Of course, that was being added. And then I've got 5 times x times the square root of 5x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so here's a pair of x's. And here's a pair of x's. So I'd have uh, 5 times x times x times x times the square root of x, which would be 5x cubed square root of x. Now that's being subtracted, and from this point it works exactly the same way as we did it before. You factor out the x cubed square root of x, you got 2 plus 9 minus 5 is 6. And you end up with 6x cubed square root of x.